Hello, everybody. Here we've got a uh, PV Delta Blues loaded with a great big JBL here. And the ticket says a little noisy general checkup. So let's power it on and see what a little noisy means. I've got the uh, volumes off, reverb off, tremolo off, treble middle bass at noon on the clean channel boost out. My goodness, that tube is bright compared to the others. Good bit of hum. Seemingly microphonic tubes. These tubes are mismatched, judging by the patterns on the plates. So let's see what happens. And we just take a look at the tubes. So these here are a pair of Sovtex, and these here are a pair of groove tubes. What happens if I make a more matched quad by having one of each pair on either side. This is the push side, this is the pull side, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter how you think of it, but what you want to do is you want to have the total current draw of the tubes on this side match the total current draw of the tubes on this side. And before, with this one over here, we had one pair that might be matched to themselves here, one pair that might be matched to themselves here, but there was no guarantee that the, both sides were matched. Let's power it back on and see if that hum has gone down. It's a good bit less hum. It's not perfect though. All right, so now are the output tubes microphonic or is it the preamp tubes? Let's pull preamp tubes one at a time. These two are microphonic, these two are not, and V1 was. Let me power it off for a minute. I know it needs probably these two output tubes replaced. Always good to replace as a quad when possible, uh, but these two are noisy. But there could be something wrong inside the amp, and there are a couple of issues that the Delta Blues and Classic 30 are very prone to that I want to check. They're the same app essentially, though uh, with uh, added uh, tremolo and a, a larger speaker, 15 inch speaker on the Delta Blues. Actually, let's power it back on and see how the pots and various channels are before I take it apart. Because uh, one of the not so great things about this series and the uh, Classic 30 is that it's really hard to test once it's taken apart. A little bit of minor dirt on that pot. Tone circuit seems okay. Tremolo is tremoloing. A little bit of minor dirt on that pot. And the reverb. A little bit of hum to it. All right, now, I'm not hearing anything that's indicative of a major fault inside. We've got a microphonic tube here. These are microphonic, and they're probably a mismatch, but there's some issues with the uh, screen supply on all the output tubes and uh, some dropping resistors in the uh, low voltage supply in these. And there, there's a particular res two resistors in the bias on this and the Classic 30 and the Classic 50 that sometimes get a little toasty. I just want to check that. Now these amps are not fun to work on due to the way things are connected. So it's going to take me a second to get all the right tools to disconnect everything. Some PVs have quick disconnects for the reverbs. These don't, you need to pull the tank at the same time. It's a pain in the butt. All right, the chassis is out and the 
plastic thick Tolex didn't get all torn up, though it's never glued all the way to the chassis. It always has these flaps that makes it want to grab onto the chassis. Before I move on to the chassis, since someone put in this very expensive JBL, I'll make sure all the hardware is tight for it. Protect their investment. What size screw did they use for this? Three eighths, okay. Usually it's 11 32nd. But yeah, these are not all the way tight. One of them's missing. Some of them are very loose. All right. Now I know that big heavy speaker is secure. All right, I pulled this so I could take a look right here. And there is discoloration on the board. These two resistors often get very, very hot. This one's already been replaced. They both should have been replaced at the same time. And they should have been replaced with resistors mounted off the board because that heat damage builds up over time. The screen grid resistors have also been changed, it looks like. But I don't see any discoloration. Uh, this cap has been changed. All the others are original. A strong argument to be made that when you change one capacitor like that, the rest should all be changed at the same time. This glue does make it a little less fun to do, and this resistor is piggybacked on top of this, so that was a less than perfect fix in the past. That's a change. So this amp has been serviced, albeit not perfectly. In fact, it's m missing two of the screws which secure the chassis to the cabinet. They look like they're standard number 8x32s or 8x24s. That shouldn't be a problem to replace them. But uh, I don't think that there's any reason for them to be gone to begin with. Now, I misremembered when I mentioned some small resistors in the this series in the Classic 50 that like to burn up. That's on the Classic 50, not on the 30 and this. And the bias supply, they're tucked away right about here on those apps. Uh, big issues with the Delta Blues and the Classic 30 are all these little wires that connect the U-shaped board. Each one of these likes to break and you get arcing very commonly. Let me see if I can show you how that construction is done. Just like a U-shaped sandwich. Makes it really hard for me to look at any issues with the tube sockets in this amp. I'm going to do that as much as I can, just looking underneath uh, with a light. I can't really show that, but uh, I'll report back if there's anything that tells me we absolutely need to go in there. Everything down on the tube socket side down there where you can't see here seems okay. Um, this amp, I'm going to have two recommended tiers of service. And if the owner goes for the second tier, then all that will be exposed as I take all this out and we'll be able to make sure that everything there is fine. Tier one is just I put in uh, four new EL84s and one new 12AX7 and hope for the best. Tier two is I do that and I replace all these resistors properly, replace these resistors properly, and I replace all the high voltage electrolytics including the ones in the uh, low voltage supply, uh, probably all the little cathode ones, can't see too many, there's one, are fine, but all the larger ones definitely should probably be replaced just to know that it's gonna be as good as possible for the next 15 years or so. But that's gonna depend on the owner's budget, how much he or she wants to put into this, how much he or she loves this. Though, you know, uh, the, uh, the big JBL indicates that this is an app that uh, someone has invested in and probably likes very much. So let me call the owner and then uh, when there's another video on this, you'll see whether we just went with the tubes or whether it's gonna get a recap as well.